this story, Bishop Strickland, man, I got to tell you, I'm very emotional about this. Can I just uh, just say that really quick here? I, in fact, here in a moment, we're going to be playing Bishop Strickland's own words that I think are apropos for this situation. So that's coming up here in just a moment. But here, this article, Swiss Bishop reprimands clergy for viral video of women can celebrating mass. A woman can celebrate a mass. The bishop, he, he issues a statement and then he, then he says, but I have full confidence in these guys. These guys are amazing men. They're just amazing, even though they have heretical positions. They are contrary to Catholic teaching. Nonetheless, they are okay. It's completely fine. They get the pat on the back. Remember this guy who uh, said Mass in the Adriatic Sea and, and it, half naked? He said Holy Mass for teenagers in the Adriatic Sea. Never got punished. He's completely in good standing, totally fine, no problem. German bishops, they back blessings for same-sex couples, female ordination, divorced and remarried, on demand, as you wish, no matter what. It's all okay. That's perfectly fine. No problem. But Bishop Joseph Strickland, well, that guy needs to be shown the door, Mike. In the words of Lightning McQueen, you know, that infamous scholar Lightning McQueen from the movie Cars, it's backwards world. What's good is bad, and what's bad is good, and everything is upside down. So, uh, you know, and, and and if you've seen the movie because you have a two-year-old like I do, you know, you turn left to go right. So in, in this case, uh, we are dealing with a uh, hierarchy in the church who believes that traditionalists are the bad guys. And I, I tried to set myself aside because I knew we were going to talk about this this morning, Joe, and, and I, I tried to think of what it was that they see – us as I'm, I'm a traditionalist. I, I, I've self-avowed traditionalist. Love the Latin Mass. Love the traditions of the Church. It's what brought me back to the Church after 40 year absence. But, but I tried to think what it is they see, and they see us the same as a mainline Jewish person sees the Hasidim. We're kind of freaks out on the periphery, and we're to be ignored. And when you have a bishop like Bishop Strickland, who's not one of us, by the way, I think he's just a good conservative bishop. But, but they see him as enabling us and. Uh, we've heard the Pope say what he thinks about us. He hasn't been he hasn't been kind in his comments to those of us who follow tradition. I just want to share share with you this one post and tweet from Bishop Strickland. He says, "For anyone who may be concerned, be assured that I am Jesus strong. Pray for Pope Francis and Christ's bride, the Church. She has weathered turmoil before, and she will continue to do so. Viva Cristo Rey." This is Bishop Strickland. I think, uh, at his best. My dear sons and daughters in Christ, may the love and grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon you always. Boy, is Bishop Strickland <laughs> something. He is powerful. Yes, He's very he is. powerful. Good to see you again, Now, Mike. you know, I, I fell in love with Bishop Strickland, uh, and you were at the event. It was it was one of the uh, prayer, men's prayer events, and I saw that man kneeling in the middle of the street in Maryland, praying the rosary. Yeah. 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 And when I, when I saw that picture, I said, this guy is special in, in a good way. That's true. And um, yeah. I pray for him every night when I say my rosary. Like you, I, I say prayers before my rosary, and, of course, I, I, I let our mother, Holy Mother, uh, choose the intentions, but I, I always pray for the good bishops like Bishop Strickland and uh, Bishop Schneider out of Europe and uh, some of these other great bishops who are standing up to, uh, you yeah. know, unfortunately, what is, is normal history in our Catholic faith, this, this series of uh, bad uh, administrators, I'll call them, in our faith is just a long history. It does feel like we are in the last days, which is by the way, the subject of the documentary film that I'm going to be filming in Rome coming up last week of October, first week of November, we're going to be talking about that question. Are we in the great apostasy? Are we in the final confrontation? I mean, yes, in a general sense, but no, I'm talking about specifically, right? I'm not talking about the general, I'm talking about the specifics. I'm going to ask that question to Cardinal Mueller, Bishop Athanasius Schneider. I'm also going to do, uh, I'm having an opportunity to, to interview uh, the gentleman who wrote this book on Our Lady of Revelation and Bruno Cornicciola. I'm going to be talking about and sharing his story about how that fits in with the third secret of Fatima there in Tre Fontane in Rome. That's coming up, so look for that. By the way, 99% say he should not resign. 1% say yes. I'd love to know why would why do you think he should say yes? If you were a yes vote, please do comment. Uh, listen, it's fine. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to 
Nobody should mistreat you in any way, shape, or form. I just want to know what the argument is. That's all. Mike, what do you say? Do you think Bishop Strickland should resign? Do you think he should take the offer? Or does of, of or course he... not. He, he should no. stay. Uh, he should stay, and uh, he should make the Pope uh, force him to resign. But I could make an argument about why he should resign. I, I'm not saying okay. I agree with it. Let, let yeah. me make the argument. Uh, there is a school of thought that bishops serve at the pleasure of the Pope. And if the Pope tells you to resign, you have to do what you're told. I, I'm not saying I agree with that, but uh, there's certainly a school of thought there. It's just like, you know, officers serve at the, pre uh, at, at the pleasure of the President of the United States, and he can get rid of them anytime he wants. Okay, I, I, mm, can I push back on that? Is that okay? I, I'm gonna. I'm trying to play devil's advocate here, so absolutely, please push back. <laughs> the difference, I think, is, and the Pillar article actually points this out. Let me go to the Pillar article. As this article points out, it is canonically rare for the Pope to actually depose a bishop. And, you know, this is one of the points that I talked to Father Charles Murr about. We live in a day and an age where priests get canceled, Bishops get retired. Like, that's the trend. The Puerto Rican yep. bishop is an example of that. There's a Minnesota guy who's an example of that. There's a guy in Tennessee who's an example of that. There's lots of examples of bishops that are just retired. Strickland looks to be like the next example in the line of bishops who are retired and or bishops who get promoted. Uh, McCarrick being an example of that one. Baggio. Baggio gets promoted Bugnini gets promoted. Why don't they get fired? Because you can't fire a bishop. That's the nature of their office. And therein lies the difference. You know, uh, you know, in the military, you, you, are, you have a hierarchy. You can be fired by your boss, and it goes all the way up the chain of command to the president of the United States. And it makes sense. It makes sense. But we aren't talking about the same structure, the same hierarchy, the same the same organization. We aren't talking about the same nature of the office. And although the Pope can take steps to depose a bishop, it is not as easy. It is not as straightforward even for the Pope to do that. And and what are they going to accuse him of? Well, they, they've, they've dug through his diocese. They've come Unless, up with some financial... Oh, they're going to come up with something, 100%. In yeah. fact, uh, let, me, let me touch on that for a second. But let me just say this. You know, unless he's committed a crime... There's nothing to there's nothing that you can fire him for. So it's just good old fashioned, good old boy pressure, put pressure on him, get him to uh acquiesce, get him to resign, and then they can all just move on. Alexandria Hall is here, says we need Bishop Strickland. What would it mean for him to resign per se? He just have to leave his post as bishop, but still gets to be an active priest in his diocese. No. So what would happen is if he resigns, he's gonna be in retirement at that point. He will be a retired bishop. He will have to go find a place to live. He will not withdraw a salary at all. And so he'll have to be supported probably by friends and families from East Texas. You know, I, I, I don't honestly think he'll have any problems with the rest of that. He'll be fine, but uh, he will just be retired with no responsibility. Just like Archbishop Gonswine recently was retired, like Cardinal Mueller was retired, like Cardinal Burke was retired. See you later. Goodbye. Thanks for your service. Have a good life you know, do whatever. Now, if you're a cardinal, you know, Cardinal Mueller, Cardinal Burke, they can roam the entire world. There's literally no place that can prevent them from showing up, saying mass, doing the TLM. They can do that. They have that authority as cardinals. They can do that. You can't stop them at that point. Now, bishops, you know, it's I, I'm not 100% sure if Bishop Strickland can show up any place he wants, say mass, hear confessions, I think the answer is no, he can't. He can say his own mass. And I'm sure people yeah, I, might happen by, just, hap, just happen by as he's saying his private mass or whatever. But uh, but nonetheless, there's going to be some restrictions there. But he'll be retired. He'll be retired. Go ahead, Mike. I I, I think, though, you're, you're judging this action in light of tradition because you're a traditionalist. And <laughs> I'm, uh, a, I'm a rigid... <laughs> meanie uh, rad rad trad uh, rad but, but you know trad. you know i think uh, you're more rad you know you're in, all, in my defense you're, <laughs> you're talking about men who who think biden's a great guy and a good Catholic. right you're talking about men who go to davos 
you're you're talking about men who, yeah. who look what's going on in my my the the land of my heritage and say, oh, that's great. I'm glad they are doing that there in Germany. Uh, and, and then you know they take a, a man, a good man from German Texas, by the way. He's from Fredericksburg, and and they think he's this horrible um, person. And and you know, Joe, I was thinking about this. You know, you kind of said we're going to talk about this. I think we decided last night. Uh, we were going to have a great conversation on AI. It would have been mo so much nicer. But anyway, yeah. uh, you know, I, I was thinking about this last night and how can we support the good bishop, his eminence? And uh, first off, you know, I don't send my money to the, to the diocese here. My, my weekly offering goes to the building fund and to the poor box. I do not send my money to the diocese. I know my bishop. My dad knows my bishop. And uh, he was McCarrick's... Uh, chief of staff. We'll just leave it at that. So wow. I, I, I make sure my money does not go to my diocese because I'm not supporting that man. And I, I think if I were in Tyler, Texas, I might have to have a good talk with my priest and see if it's appropriate to support the bishop at this time. Um, I mean, prayers are certainly something, but uh, to your point, if he is retired, um, maybe we need to do something with him, make sure he is financially secure uh, yeah. My guess is, having seen this man kneel in the middle of the street, he's probably one of the bishops who lives in poverty. And that, that, that's just a, a feeling I get Yeah, um, I, based on I, nothing. I, I've been very <laughs> blessed to have known Bishop Strickland for a long time, to have spent private time with him on a, a number, a few occasions anyway. And uh, yeah, I get the same sense that he is, he, and I'm, in my own dealings, I can just tell you firsthand how humble how sincere he is and conversating with him privately he's just an amazing guy you know and i've i've talked to cardinals and powerful people in the inside and outside the church and you get a different sense when you're around him for sure does that make him perfect no it doesn't make him perfect let me just let me just say say share this as part of the pillar article senior sources close to the uh the tyler diocese told the pillar that the tone of the letter had surprised many senior clergy of the diocese I want you to let that sink in for a second about the like sort of like, you know, we can make some assumptions about how strong the diocese is and how strong and their support is. But I think this is indicating a bit of a weakness here. The tone of the letter had surprised many. Does that letter surprise you? Is the tone of what he said serious? I mean, serious in nature. But what about that letter is radical? Literally nothing. Literally nothing about that that of that letter is radical, in my opinion. I guess my opinion. It's my opinion. So take it for what it's worth. Big, huge grain of salt. Several figures in the diocese confronted Strickland over the tone of the letter, the pillar was told, and warned the bishop his position was becoming untenable. Golly gee whiz, I wonder who, who these people are. I have, I've gone door to door, knocked on every parish door in seven dioceses. And I can tell you in my experience, professional, Catholic, nonprofit work experience, I can tell you that this is one of the biggest troubles we have in the church today is the relationship between bishop and priest is CEO and branch manager. Mm. As a result of the nature of that, the struggle between bishop and priest as father and son is in, in, intense. And often when you have good bishops... Um, Bishop Gracida in Corpus Christi, strong bishop, a veteran of World War II. You know, this guy flew bombers over Germany. He was a strong bishop in Corpus Christi, not well loved by his by yeah. his priests. This is often the case. You get a you get if you get a weak bishop, he gets run over by by uh, by priests who are you know happy to to leverage that situation for their own personal benefit, stay as kings in their little castles for as long as possible and not let the bishop tell them one way or the other. You get a strong bishop who is orthodox and faithful, and you get resistance. Very common. Very, very common. So I'm not at all surprised to learn this, but let's just be honest. In the last couple of years, have you heard any inklings of this type of thing coming out of Tyler, Texas? No, you have not. And yet here we are, the pillars bringing it up. Quote, people were deeply alarmed by the letter. One senior source close to the diocese told the pillar. But the bishop 
having was having none of it. He was absolutely firm that he was saying what needs to be said and that he wouldn't be silenced by anyone, close quote. Some sources in the diocese have told the pillar that Strickland claims he had been directed by the Blessed Virgin Mary to continue his outspoken engagement on global church affairs. Have you ever heard that before, Mike? <laughs> he, he's, he's one of a few, isn't he? Just a small few. Yeah, um, he sure is. He, he is something. Listen, I, I, I am so glad we are talking about this man, and, and hopefully he hears this. Um, there are a lot of us out here who support him. There are a lot of us out here who are praying for him. Uh, and, and remember, this is a diocesan bishop. By the way, I, I think what they're going to do is promote him to be the bishop of Iran or someplace like that, a bishop of Iraq. Which, by the way, reminds me, guess who else is on that list of, of prelates who were pr promoted out of the Vatican? Can you, can you think of one off the top of your head that also may be a controversial figure today? You might recall yeah, Archbishop of course. Vigano of course. got promoted out of the Vatican. Archbishop Vigano was in charge of the bank, which, by the way— Remember in our conversation with Father Charles Murr, when they did that investigation under Paul VI, in the dossier, in the giant telephone book dossier was, by the way, you not only have Freemasons, Pope Paul VI, it, that are choosing bishops, which need to be deposed immediately, but also the Freemasons are corrupting your bank system, and it's going to cause a major scandal. They're trying to drain your coffers and break you in half. You need to do something, which Paul VI pushed it back and said, give it to my predecessor john the 23rd says i got a council i don't pff, got time for this you know or i'd rather jp1 last 33 days and then jp2 you know basically put it off until someone tried to kill him and then he got interested and by then it was a little a day late and a dollar short fast forward through benedict 16th vigano vigano actually uncovered the uh the, the snakes in the grass at the vatican bank and for his trouble he was shown the door. He got promoted to Papal Nuncio of the United States. And then that's when I talked to him. I interviewed him just as he was being fired by uh, by Pope Francis for daring to interview that lady from Kentucky who refused to sign marriage licenses as a county clerk uh, for same-sex unions. Taylor Marshall weighed in yesterday. Uh, Taylor Marshall is probably much more closer to Strickland than I am. And he personally said that he did not believe. He had no insider information. He was clear to say that, but it was in his opinion, knowing Strickland as well as he does, that Strickland would not resign, that he would have to be forced out. And you know, that reminds me, I had a friend once, a, a trad Catholic guy out of New Hampshire. When I was, um, this was when I was living there still, he was graduating college and he was going off to officer's candidate school for the Marine Corps. And I gave him some advice, and then he ended up coming back. He, never, he didn't finish. He wasn't commissioned. They kicked him out, and he was really upset by that. They didn't kick him out of the Marine Corps. They kicked him out of officer candidate school, and he was a junior still in college at the time. And the reality is, because he was a junior, they weren't going to commission him. That was the harsh reality. And I said, to, I said, well, let me ask you a question. Did you quit? He goes, oh, 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 no way. No way. I didn't. They kicked me out. I'm like, well, then cheers to you, bro. They had to throw you out to get rid of you because you would you did not quit. You were not a quitter. I said, that's a badge of honor, bro. And then he went back. He did get commissioned. He served in the Marine Corps as an officer. And uh, and I thanked him for his service. But my point being, same thing to, to Bishop Strickland, that would be my personal advice. Not that he's asking for it or is ever going to listen to it or whatever. Uh, but my personal advice, just like I'm sure most of you, is let them kick you out. Die on the battlefield standing. Glory be to God. You know, go to your grave saying they had to get rid of me because I refused to quit. Like, that would be my advice. What do you say, Mike? I, 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 same, same, same. I, I think uh, we need, he empowers others too. If Bishop Strickland stands up to this, then there are others that are going to be emboldened by his Christly position. You know, Jesus didn't win any friends when he threw the money changers out of the temple. Uh, you know, it, it's no big shock that, what was it, a week later they, they executed him. Uh, you know, the Sanhedrin com took him to trial and then turned him over to Roman authorities. I, I, I struggle. I struggle with men, good men who lead our churches, who act as our real heavenly fathers, uh, uh, you know, commissioned by God to be our fathers here on earth and in and, and the place of Christ. I, I, I struggle with them when they quit or step back. Don't do it. Stand up to the to the uh, 
this wave of just, I don't know what to call it, Joe, modernism. I, it's beyond modernism. This I wave of anti. But what do I <laughs> it know? is. I mean, you know, and <laughs> it's it's crazy. I, and and it, and I know that we we take everything that uh, oh the author of uh, uh, Windswept House. Uh, we take Malachi everything Martin. he says with a grain. Malachi Martin. We take everything he says with a grain of salt. But I, I do believe there is an ape of the church is being formed, and 100%. it just terrifies yeah. me. Yeah, it terrifies the, me. And I'm the <laughs> go the ahead of the please. present world. The end of the present world, Father Amarjan, I uh, spoke about that yesterday. He makes this point, you know, the devil can only ape God. So even when the Antichrist does come onto the scene and he uh, he does away with worship because he wants to focus worship to him and his image, therefore, uh, you know, uh, through him to Satan himself, he will mock God. So his sorcerers who perform miracles they're not actually going to perform miracles. Like, uh, for instance, the, the person who's going to be miraculously brought back from the dead is one of the signs. You know, he's either going to not have actually been dead to begin with, but just seemingly dead, or he will not actually be alive after. He will just seemingly be alive. They might reanimate the body, but it won't be the real person. You know, either way, he is mocking God. He is only able to ape God. That is one of the signs that we are required to read as our Lord Jesus Christ has given to us to read the signs in order to make proper and prudential choices of our times. So doing away with liturgies and, and worship to God, which is what we owe to God, we owe God worship, in order to pave the way for uh, this one world religion of the Antichrist, that is what's to come. And it will be the mocking of God is one of the vehicles that gets that done, Mike. We have to pray for for the good bishop. Maybe I'm going to sit down and write a card and send it to the bishop and let him know that we're praying for him here in Virginia. Uh, and by the way, I, I misspoke. Bishop Strickland actually does say the traditional Latin mass. He does. Uh, he yes. does say it. He and, and he so does, I, I misspoke. He does say both, obviously, but yeah, yeah. So he he is a semi traditionalist. <laughs> he well, he's a, growing. I think I you know, that was something he he told me personally. Just how he, you know, he didn't he didn't. He's been waking up ever since they made him a bishop. That really was a an eye-opening experience for him, and it scared him. And he knew he had to get his faith uh, straight, and his he had to get very serious about it. And and he's been on that path ever since. And, you know, I have been focused a lot lately on the apostasy, the end times, Malachi Martin, all, all of these corruptions and all this. And I don't do so to fan the flame of anxiety. I really don't. Rather, it's... Pray, hope, and don't—I mean, Padre Pio is my guy. I agree. Pray, hope, and don't worry. That's true. But you also have to be awake. You also have to be looking for the times. You have to be woken from your lethargy, from your afternoon slumber, from your siesta. you got to wake up. you got to smack yourself and be paying attention. Pray, hope, and don't worry. But also, you need to be on point because if you're just sleeping and going along for the, for the lazy river ride— you're going to be brought straight into the vast number of the faithful who apostatize in the church. And um, you don't want that. You definitely don't want that. So pray, hope, and don't worry, but be awake. Be awake and be paying attention. Hey, listen, let me let me twist this just a little and make it positive. Uh, and I'm going oh, to make it positive. This is, well, you well, don't... What show is this that we're, we're positive all of a sudden? Well, like, listen, they don't attack you when you're not a threat. They don't come after you. When they're not when they're not afraid of you, they are afraid of what Bishop Strickland stands for. They are afraid Agreed. of what all these Agreed. great bishops stand for. These good priests like Father Murr, who I, I've enjoyed both times. He's been on the show. He's wonderful. I I, I watched I, I actually watched him twice. I, I caught him on the on the live, and then I watched the I listened to the podcast because I learned so much from him every time he's on. These these good priests like Father Brancich up there in New Hampshire. Or, or my own priest, we've got to know that we're scaring them to death. And if we're scaring them to death, they come after us. And when they yeah. come after you, you're winning. And we are winning, Joe. We are winning. We are taking back the faith. I walk into church and, and I see the kids and the babies and all you hear are the cries. And, and listen, that's a church that's on fire. And you go to any TLM in this country and that's what you're going to hear every at yeah. every mass. It's going to be babies Amen. crying and and little kids running up and down the halls when they're not supposed to run, and 
the priest, yes. you can't get an appointment with the priest because he's so busy. He's busy. But yeah. We're winning, Joe. We're winning. And, and Jesus is behind this movement. And we're returning mm -hmm. to the faith of our fathers, yeah. to, the, to the same mass that my grandfather worshiped our Lord in, to the same mm -hmm. church that my great grandfathers and, 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 and those, those warriors who went into battle who are my great, 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 however many grandfathers against uh, the apostasy of m the Muslims. I, I mean, this is a, a centuries old battle that we're waging and we win because we're on the right side. And they Amen. go after Bishop Strickland and ignore this guy who's sitting right here in my own diocese because he's the bad guy in their minds because he stands for truth and he stands for the justice of our precious Lord. And, and we're winning, Joe. And, and that's the positive of this. If Bishop Strickland were just another knucklehead, they wouldn't be paying any attention to him. They just let him rant and rave. They, they, he scares them because he goes to California and he stands outside a baseball stadium and says, what you're doing is wrong. By any standard, it's wrong. Yeah. God and bless now, Bishop Strickland. <laughs> if they retire no. him, do you think he's going to stop talking? Nope. No, no, no. Now, what, what, know, what do you I, got now? <laughs> Once you retire him, nothing holds him back whatsoever. Uh, Adon says, I'm suffering with anger. Brother, I am right there with you. I am so disgusted at how the church wants to join the world. It's sickening. Yay and amen. It's not the church. So let's let's make clear distinctions. Holy Mother Church cannot ever be uh, be united with error. Ever. Holy Mother Church is the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and it is perfect. It is the members of the church. It is the Judases among the apostles. It is the wolves in sheep's clothing, the snakes in the grass. And yes, yes, of course, they have powerful positions, Joe. Well, let me remind you of what our Lord actually said to these apostles, that they might uh, know this before it ever happens in Matthew chapter 23, starting in verse 1. It says, Jesus spoke to the multitudes and to his disciples, saying, the scribes, and the Pharisees have sitten on the chair of Moses, the cathedra of Moses. All things, therefore, whatsoever they shall say to you, observe and do. But according to their works, do ye not. For they say and do not. He goes on to say, For they bind heavy and insupportable burdens, and they lay them on men's shoulders, but with a finger of their own, they will not move them. And all their works they do for to be seen of men, for they make their phylacteries broad and enlarge their finger, their fringes. And they love the first places at feasts and the first chairs and the synagogues and salutations in the marketplaces and to be called by men rabbi. But be not you called rabbi, for one is your master, and all you are brethren. And call no none your father upon earth, for one is your father who is in heaven. Neither be called masters, for one is called master Christ. He is the greatest among you, shall be called servant. And whoever shall exalt himself shall be humbled, and he that shall humble himself shall be called exalted. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you shut the kingdom of heaven against men. For you yourselves do not enter in, and those that are going in you suffer not to enter. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you devour the houses of widows, praying long prayers. For this you shall receive the greater judgment. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, because you go round about the sea and the land to make one uh, proselyte, and when one is made, you make him the child of hell, two more fold, more than yourselves. Woe to you blind guides. All right. Can you, can you not get the sense of fire and brimstone and his tone there? I mean, I wonder if senior officials, senior people close to the diocese were concerned about the tone of Jesus and his, and his uh, statements here. I uh, just I'm wondering if Jesus maybe felt led by the Blessed Virgin Mary, his mother, you know, to go out and to preach the glory of God, even if it meant dying on a cross. Woman, 
What is this between you and me? For my hour has not yet come. And what does she do? She turns to these, these servants and says, do whatever he tells you. Let me interpret that for you from the original languages. It means, let's get this thing going. To the Calvary we go. Nailed to a cross my son must be to die for you and for me. And let the hypocrites, let them have their day because judgment is coming. The millstones are being fashioned and they will be securely placed around the necks of these wolves and they will be cast into the sea. And if you and I don't get on our knees and if we don't pray fast and do penance and beg God to have mercy on these wolves, they will burn in hell for all eternity. But Joe, they're, they're wolves. They don't deserve it. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. It's our, our obligation to endure the sound beating of the man with the keys until the master comes home. The very next chapter from this, what I just read to you, is Jesus telling us that the guy with the keys, the chief steward, some might call him a papa or pope, gets drunk and he begins to beat and abuse the servants of the household. At no time do, are we allowed to leave the house at no time does the master say, go ahead, go set up your own thing. You don't deserve this. You deserve better. Go find a better thing. Never, ever, ever are we let off the hook. We are expected to endure until the end. So guess what? Bishop Strickland must die on his feet. And so must you and me. We must die in the midst of battle. We must die on our feet, always loyal, always faithful, always true to Holy Mother Church. Because the church does not belong to the wolves. They cannot have it. We must never acquiesce Holy Mother Church to the wolves. Ever, 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 ever. They cannot have it. It doesn't belong to them. But if we don't pray for them, hell waits for them. And if we can't forgive, then neither shall we be forgiven. Let us never forget that, ever. Bad days are coming. Are you ready? 2024 is going to be a, a ride. Are you prepared? Spiritually, physically, mentally, ready? Yesterday, uh, or over the weekend, I, I hinted to the group about how inflation is real. You know, nine months ago, I had, I had uh, $400 extra a month in buffer. Nine months ago, uh, we didn't change our spending habits we try to live within our means at all times. I own two cars. I don't make payments on two cars. I, I buy used just so that I don't have to spend a lot of money. I have a cheap house in a cheap neighborhood. And uh, I try to live within our means. Four, nine months ago, I had 400 extra bucks. Today, I got zero extra dollars. 100% comes in, is going straight back out. I don't, I'm not complaining, I'm explaining. Inflation is real. Are you prepared for it to get worse? Are you ready for that? Because I live in a day and an age where, you know, you almost can't afford to live anymore, which is why what Jason Jones said was, is real, let alone you couple on top of that the apostasy that grows within the church. And can I, I, hate, to, I hate to take this and run the soapbox, Mike, but I, I, I need to share this with you real quick before we sign off today. I saw this article at the NCR. Archbishop Fernandez, soon to be Cardinal Fernandez, warns against bishops who think they can judge doctrine of the Holy Father. This is the guy who wrote the book on kissing as catechesis for teenagers. Yep. Did I, I just want to make sure I said that clearly enough. This is the guy who wrote a book on kissing as a catechesis for teenagers. I won't bore you with the article. You should read it for yourself. But let me just scroll down to something that infuriates me right here. This is the Archbishop's commentary. However, even in such situations that may seem scandalous, the church grows and matures in its understanding of some aspects of the gospel that had not been made sufficiently explicit before. <sighs> inner peace, inner, inner, inner peace. Fuzzy, fuzzy bunnies. <laughs> I got to tell you, I got to tell you. Can I just share with you? Uh, I struggle with anger. 
I struggle. I struggle with it. It's a battle. It's a war within me. God knows that within me uh, lies a raging bear. And right now, I want to rage. This archbishop, soon to be a cardinal, thinks that there's something about the gospel that can be enlightened today that, say, St. Thomas Aquinas couldn't possibly scratch the surface of. Couldn't have known. <laughs> the, the utter arrogance of that is mind flipping blowing. Are you out of your mind? There's no way on your clearest day you couldn't hold the follicle of a hair of St. Thomas Aquinas. This is the guy who said at the end of his, of his life, basically stopped writing because God showed him that all of his writing, as amazing as it is, was only but a flame. I mean, like, literally, even Thomas Aquinas, in his humility, recognized that he couldn't do justice to it. And he is light years ahead of everyone today. But somehow... People like Thomas Aquinas, Cornelius Elapide, Suarez, and the many other uh, Bonaventure. I mean, I could go on and on and on. But somehow they, eh, they didn't know. <laughs> We're learning things that they didn't even know. He goes on to say, I believe that this dicastery can be a space that can welcome these debates and frame them in the secure doctrine of the church, thus avoiding the for the faithful some of the more aggressive, confusing, and even scandalous media debates. He goes on to say, I was referring to the confusing as a same-sex union with marriage. At this point, it is clear that the church can only understand marriage as an indissoluble union between a man and a woman, and their differences are naturally open to beget life. So I guess that means, hey, listen, as long as you don't call it marriage, it's all good. Cheers, Molotov, what, or whatever the Jews say, and they smash their glasses. I mean, uh, all right, I, I warned you, I, I have anger issues. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Listen, this is, this is, by the way, we can judge a man by his enemies, right? So when your enemies blaze soupage, oh, you're probably on the right side, aren't you? <laughs> you're, you're over the target. You're over the target. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking this is, uh, and, and by the way, I did want to mention this, Joe. It keeps pounding in my head. This the Sanhedrin. What happened to the Sanhedrin after they went off to, after that Jewish carpenter? What happened to? <laughs> yeah, they didn't, How work, long, things didn't work out. Things How long did out. it exist after they went after that Jewish carpenter? You know, he he was yeah. just a poor carpenter, the son mm -hmm. of a carpenter, mm -hmm. supposedly, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and, and they just went after him, and then they execute him, and the sky opened up. Distra the temple was torn asunder and as he predicted they ripped down the temple and it hasn't been built since the the, the, the real back, temple though. was him it, it yeah. was him but the real temple was our lord and savior and he rose again and thousands saw him it says it in scripture thousands saw him it wasn't it wasn't a a fake out like what we were alluding to earlier it was for real and and so this you know, when, when you say that you know better than St. Dominic, yeah, St. Albert yeah. the Great, St. Albert the Great, the man who taught Thomas Aquinas. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know, so, just St. Thomas mean, Aquinas. The arrogance of bless, it. Yeah. Bless it, blessed uh, Carl, uh, uh, St. Therese, the little flower. When you know better than them, <laughs> oh, I mean, come, come on. You know better it. than St. Paul. But that is part Paul? of the signs. <laughs> When you go back to read, the, like, go back and read the end of this present world, uh, I mean, that is not prophetic work, by the way. That's just a, hey, this is what the church teaches on the end times. This is what the church and the fathers have taught about the Antichrist, the signs of the end, when it will happen, what will happen. It's just a, all it is is a catechesis. It's not prophecy. So it's completely on safe ground. So the end of the present, uh, present world by Father Amajan. You know, and it was, again, written back in the 1800s. St. Therese of Lisieux loved it and highly endorsed it. And uh, she talks about, and, or not she, but her father talks about, that is part of the Antichrist, the age of the great apostasy, to stop defending and teaching doctrine. That's exactly what Archbishop Fernandez is basically hinting at. Don't worry, we won't change doctrine. 
We'll just spin everything so it looks as though Quist. it fits within doctrine. We'll just Quist. reinterpret the doctrine as it is on the books without ever changing it into a favorable light that we, we can live with. So we won't be changing any doctrine. We're just going to manipulate it for our benefit. Let that sink in, folks. God love you God all. Bless God bless Bishop you all. Strickland. Mike, I'm sorry I ran with all of that, but God bless you too, my God. friend. God bless you. Did you like that video? It's okay. You can admit it. It's perfectly fine. Hey, we cover the big stories of our day from inside the church to outside the church to all points in between. And we do it from a Catholic perspective. It's called a Catholic take. It's a radio program Monday through Friday. We live stream it right here on this channel, by the way. So make sure to subscribe, like, and share. We would be very grateful to you. And don't forget, you're going to want to watch this video right here because you don't want to miss anything.